Something weird was happening to the Tesla and honestly, it might be my wife Everyday Jan's fault, it might not be, who knows. But we had an issue where the front passenger safety restraint wasn't working. Everyday Jan did tell me that she spilled some water on the seat. What's water gonna do? I spill water all the time. Apparently it's a thing on the forums, if you spill too much water or if the water goes down the wrong way, you could potentially cause some sort of sensor to trip which is I think what happened. So we used a hair dryer, I maxed out the heater, turned on the heated seats. Three days later, the notification went away, hasn't come back, we went driving everywhere, and no problem. So I'm hoping it's gone, but the point of this video isn't because of that. So if you guys are having that issue, try that method. Because I was draining my battery so much, blasting the heater to try to dry it, I thought to myself, this is the perfect time to test out my battery health in the Secret Service menu. For us, it's been a little over three years. We're a little over 53,000 miles. We did get a new battery at the 10,000 mile mark. I don't know if you would say it's new, it is refurbished. So one reason to do the battery health test is if you get a used Tesla and you wanna check on the battery health, very easy to do. Another huge reason you should do this test is if you feel that your battery range has gone down drastically and you wanna do a battery health check to see if you're covered under warranty for a possible replacement. Now, with the Model 3 Model Y, it's eight years or 120,000 miles for 70% battery retention. So if it's below 70% and you're below 120,000 miles in, or eight years, you can probably put in a service request and see if you can get a replacement battery. I did wanna point out that when the Model Y first came out, it was giving an estimated range of like 315 miles. And then when we got our Model Y in 2021, they updated the range to, I think it was like 326 miles, which is a nice gap. And now if you were to get a Model Y today, it's around 330 miles. And this is what I was talking about on why I'm kind of upset because we had the original 323 or 325 miles when we first got the car with the new battery. But then when we got that high voltage battery replacement done, the new range was 315 miles. And again, the service people said to just drive it and it recalibrates. So 295 miles is like a 20 mile difference from 315. So overall, it's not too big of a deal. But then again, 20 miles in a little over a year since we got that new battery isn't the best battery degradation possible, which is why I'm hoping the battery health test will kind of show me my overall battery health if it even does that. Now, before I test it out, I wanted to see what am I at at 100%? So I'm gonna go ahead, charge up Daddy Chill to 100% just to see what 100% is gonna give me currently. And then I'm gonna do the test where I drain it to zero and then charge it back up and see if that even makes a difference because I don't want you guys to do something just to kind of see what the battery health is and there's no point to it, right? If it could potentially recalibrate the battery and give me maybe two, three, five, ten 10 extra miles, that would be great. I'm at 38% right now or 113 miles. It is saying that 100%, this is actually really accurate by the way. Whenever I charge to 100% and it tells me what the charge limit is, it has been spot on like all the time. So it's saying at 100%, I'm gonna be at a 295 miles, but we will see. Okay, so we are at 100%. And it is giving us 295 miles, so very, very accurate. In order to do the battery health test, you have to let your car pretty much drain extremely low. Then you have to charge it up to 100%, and then it gives an accurate battery health test measurement. I have no idea what's gonna happen, so let's go ahead and check it out. Right now we are here. I'm gonna go ahead, go to software, hold this, type in service. You guys should know this by now. We're gonna go to high voltage. I'm gonna do a health test. So I have to unlock the gateway. So now I have to unlock the gateway by putting my foot on the brake. Up turn signal. And just hold it there. So now the gateway is unlocked. So let's go ahead and see what they require. Okay, so this is what they require. The vehicle needs to be plugged into a six kilowatt AC charger. The test will take up to 24 hours. Do not interact with the vehicle or the test may abort. Before running this routine, state of charge must be below 50%. Vehicle must be plugged into the AC charging station capable of supplying at least six kilowatts. HV battery will be discharged and then charged to full. Heat will be generated outside the vehicle during discharge. Also, a lot of people want to know how they exit service mode. I mean, it's easy. You could press this button here. 
So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna plug in the Tesla. It's gonna drain all the way down and then I think it's gonna charge up to 100%. And we're gonna do the battery health test. So I'm at 30.3%. Test in progress. Holy, it's loud. It's trying to drain all the battery and uh, turn the fans on so it could cool the battery and all that stuff. But listen to how loud this is. So it really tries to lower the battery percentage to zero. It's so hot. It's 103 inside the garage now. 36 miles, so now I dropped it down to 12%. I think it's gonna go all the way down to zero. 9% and the battery is still draining really, really loud. 7% and it's still gonna drain. So it looks like after a certain time, the battery just drains slowly instead of using the fan rapidly. So now we are at 5.5%. So I'm assuming it's gonna go down to 0%, then charge up to 100%. Charge to 100%, looks like it gave me 296 miles, so one extra mile. I thought it would show like a percentage, but it did not. The first thing I learned is that if your battery percentage is too high above 50%, it's not even gonna complete, and it's not gonna let you do the test. So what the car does is it drains the battery all the way down, probably to around maybe even two or three percent. But the way it does it can be confusing and it makes people confused as to what's going on. So for me, I had a pretty high state of charge, 40%. So what that does is it ramps up the power to tr and the heat. It's so hot and loud to try to drain the batteries as much as possible because my state of charge is high enough. However, once it gets down pretty low, that turns off and it slowly drains the battery. So don't think that it stopped or something got wrong or messed up. Just keep it plugged in and let it do its thing. Now it does say it can take up to 24 hours and I didn't really believe that because I was at 100% the next day and I thought, oh, it's done. So I unplugged it and when I went into the screen, it didn't show my battery health. Apparently, once it gets to 100%, do not unplug it. It still needs a few hours to calibrate at 100% charge. Keep it plugged in, go to the screen to check, and wait until you get a battery health percentage. So take two, we're gonna try the battery health test again. This time I'm gonna make sure I do not touch the car for 24 hours. There it is, 90%. Not bad, it gave me two extra miles. Last night I found that around 7%, it stopped that super loud fan and it drained really, really slowly. I'm talking about maybe 1% an hour. And right now, currently, it's 9.30 in the morning. So it didn't take 24 hours because I started this test around like one or two, but it almost took 24 hours. So keep that in mind as well. Aside from maybe a reset and a recalibration, I gained two whopping miles, guys. For me, I'm very surprised over 50,000 miles and my battery health is at 90%, which isn't bad at all. So there you have it, guys. It took me almost a day for Daddy Chill to see what my battery health was. 90%, I'm very happy with that. And I gained two extra miles for that. Hope that video helped you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.